You can listen to this as something informative or something uh, mildly interesting. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's working out very well for me. We're experiencing uh, the worst January probably in stock market history. It's already down 12%. It, if it goes down even a little bit more, it will be the worst January in stock market history. What you gonna do when you see Joe Byron in the Oval Office? I'm gonna give him a big old kiss. Hey, yo! This is not financial nor professional advice. This video is for entertainment only. Hey everyone, how are you doing in the strangest stock market? Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. I hope you're doing as well as I am. Of course, I'm in uh, triple leverage uh, bear funds, which I'm not proud of, which is helping me to ride out this crash. Uh, pretty well. I don't recommend it to anyone. It's just something I'm doing. It's already down 12% and it, if it goes down even a little bit more, it will be the worst January in stock market history. I'm talking mainly about the NASDAQ. Uh, that is down almost 12%. It's especially disappointing because January often sets the tone for the rest of the year. It was thought that if you have a good January, uh, the rest of the year usually works out pretty well. But this on top of there not being much of a Christmas rally, it really looks bad. It's so bad that long-term bulls like Kathy Wood are thinking of shorting because <laughs> they're looking for ways to make money. And the only way you make money in a major crash like this is, is, is shorting. I use inverse funds, which is a more conservative way of shorting, actually. Uh, but uh, Kathy Wood, it, it makes sense the way she wants to short. She's thinking of shorting GM and Ford. Now, this makes sense because she thinks they're going through a creative destruction that Tesla is causing with their innovation uh, of, like, of electric cars. GM and Ford are trying to get into electric vehicles and they're making them. The problem is the first couple of years that you make electric vehicles, all you do is lose money on them. Every, every electric vehicle they make, they're losing money on. They make over 95% of their money on gas cars. And so they're going, they're, they're getting a, a double win. They're losing money on the electric cars and the part of the business they are making money on is going down and they're making money on them now, but they soon will be losing money and then they're going to have to make the big switch over. And I think Ford will probably do somewhat better than GM. That's just my gut feeling. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if one or both of them had to declare the type of bankruptcy where uh, creditors can't come at you and they don't let you reorganize. I think that's likely. I think the government will bail them out uh, as the government has signaled in so many ways that they favor GM anyway. Uh, so uh, they it's, it's interesting that a long-term bull like Kathy Wood is turning to shorting, and it, and it makes sense. Uh, the companies that are being destroyed should be shorted uh, because they did not make the switch soon enough. They were warned about this years ago, and they, they, didn't, they didn't move on it. And they don't listen. Stupid! And they could, they didn't move on because they were making so much money with their dealerships and having you sit in their, in their showroom while they tried to repair the many things that go wrong with gas cars. It's interesting that Warren Buffett, <laughs> he historically said, and I mean, we're talking real history now. <laughs> this is the early 1900s. He said back then, it was the same thing. Innovation was the gas car. You know, it was horse and buggies. 
before that, okay? But Buffett always says that you would have made more money shorting the horse and buggy companies than buying any of the, uh, the gas car companies back then. There were like hundreds of car companies and it was impossible to, to tell which ones were going to, to succeed. Uh, but the horse and buggy companies, I would imagine there weren't that many of them and, and they were probably well established. Uh, and it was a certainty they were, they were going to go down. Um, so you would have made more money and metaphorically the same thing uh, with gas cars, maybe is it, it is the smarter thing to, sh to short them. And you know, making electric cars, I can see what they're trying to do but that actually might speed up their destruction if they can't make the switch smoothly enough because all you do is lose, lose, lose uh, the first couple of years you're making electric cars. So I think the Federal Reserve, uh, they guaranteed that there was going to be a bull market back in 2020. And when the market started to crash, you know, I got out of the market Looking back on that, I wish I would discovered triple leverage inverse funds back then because I should have been gone to a triple leverage bear fund back then and rode the crash down that got in on a bull fund and, and triple leveraged up, which is what I'm planning to do with this. Uh, and, and I think it's a reasonable thing to do because the Federal Reserve guaranteed it was it was going to be a bull market. They more or less said, you know, right, Jesus Christ. you know, they will do anything and everything, uh, which included buying bonds uh, and uh, keeping interest rates at zero. Uh, we've never seen such intervention by the Federal Reserve. It's unprecedented. They more or less replaced the economy for a year. <laughs> you know, it, it was just amazing. Uh, but when I saw that they were going to do anything to keep the market up, I went all in on the market, which turned out to be a good decision. Now, the market coming down uh, in 2021, you know, it's hard to get rid of an addiction. And I think you, you get addicted to a bull market. And uh, I kept too many small stocks and frankly, I'm sick of losing money. And so when I, a couple of weeks ago, I could see that a major crash was coming. And then when, when he guaranteed a bear market by saying, we're going to stop tapering, we're going to uh, probably increase interest rates, and we're going to increase it at least to 1%. Uh, and then we're going to offload our balance sheet. You know, those bonds that we did buy, <laughs> we're going to put back into the market, which tends to increase interest rates. You know, you've got, uh, you've got a triple whammy guaranteed uh, for at least the next year. It will go to 1%. I think he's being forced politically to do this. Uh, I think he's naturally more of a bull but I think he's he's been told or it's been indicated to him that he had better get the interest rates going. And if inflation keeps being like 10%, he's going to be pressured to do more than a quarter of, of a percent at a time. You know, uh, we might get the shock and awe treatment of 1% raises at a time, which would truly shock uh, the stock market and, uh, you know, I, I, think, I think things are going to go down uh, or at least not do much more than sideways until October is what I expect. Uh, and it might last longer than that. It all depends on inflation. It all depends on the flu and the state of the health of the world and the United States. Uh, all these things are interacting together. I mean, in many ways, he's been the victim of a perfect storm of, of the flu and economic conditions. 
And I think there's a long-term deflationary effect to technology, but that's being overwhelmed uh, by the short-term effects of the flu. But everybody's been getting the flu, but maybe people will recover uh, in the sense that we'll get herd immunity and that we'll have herd immunity from this flu thing. And then maybe it'll go forward and the earnings of companies will pick up. But I'm, I'm going to stick with the triple inverse funds until I can get some indication from the Fed that we're done raising interest rates. And I think that's going to be a while in coming. In my next video, I will be giving you the specific names of funds that I'm using, these triple inverse funds. Uh, how and when I'm using these funds and also uh, how I plan to use these funds in the future and what direction I'm going with the funds because even within these bearer funds there's some that do better at different times than, than the other ones and I will switch around from time to time so I will plan to keep you informed on that and bring you up to date on my trading for your interest in the next video. If you found this informative or of value or useful to you, uh, please uh, like and subscribe and share the wealth. <laughs> share it with friends and family or, or who may be interested. Uh, but this is only what I'm doing. Uh, it's not a recommendation uh, and it's for your information if you want to be informed or your entertainment if you want to be entertained. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe so that you receive notifications of future videos and I will plan to see you in the future. Thanks for watching. What you gotta tell Joe Biden right now? Bring me to the White House, baby.